Hello, everybody. God bless you. Quick video. I wanted to jump on here. Hopefully you are having a great Sabbath day. And I was just uh, taking a listen to something um, that was shared uh, on one of my Facebook friends uh, pages. Now, this is the second post that he has posted that has been confirmation to what God has been given to me to share with the fueling station. So really quick. Um, I hope that if you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because you're going to enjoy the content that we have here. And if you're the repeat viewers, hello, each and every one of you, please don't forget the thumbs up the button and uh, let us know that you're there and you're enjoying this content. That's the only way we will know by you thumbing up the content saying we appreciate what you're doing and all of that other good stuff. Um, really quick. This video is mind blowing to me simply because the Lord had given me uh, um, a, a three part series, if I'm not mistaken. And the video was on when the prophets lie or the lying prophets rather. And, um, you know, I, I started the series out saying I don't I didn't make this up, you know, because I don't make up names. I can't, you know, come up with good topics. You know, I always ask the Holy Spirit, can you put something in my spirit to give me, a, um, you know, something to talk about that is from the heart of God. And I literally had to come back and explain and make you understand this is not talking about prophets that are not perfect. This is not talking about prophets that have uh, failures or, you know, uh, they're, you know, because we could look at people on the microscope. And I was talking about Jeremiah the other day, uh, yesterday when I was preaching, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't a popular guy. Most prophets are not. So, you know, many people can fall, find all kinds of faults with prophets. So when we talking about uh, the prophets that lie, we're talking about people that is, um, really sent in the body of Christ to uh, mi misrepresent God. They are really truly prophets by their call, but they have uh, changed the calling of God for the exchange of um, uh, wealth, um, positions and authorities or whatever fame, uh, Instagram followers today is a little bit of any and everything. And, um, and so um, I'm, I'm sharing with you. I haven't slept yet. So please forgive me if I'm kind of having a little brain fog. So I began to share with you the heart of God concerning the lying prophets, because when you're listening to prophets that are misleading God's people with a teaching, I'm talking about a whole way that is error. You can't be this kind of prophet by accident. I ain't talking about nothing you could do wrong. No, this is something that you have taken, taken a whole different turn down the road and you've said, I'm going to compromise. And so it is a whole um, slew of things that these prophets of Baals that are lying prophets that are doing now, I tried to explain this as very as much as possible to the fueling station. Uh, and the thing about it, it is so very important that you get this. I began to share with the fueling station. And sometimes people are thinking that you are just possessive of them or you thinking that, you know, um, you know, you, you're trying to put fear in us or you overly warning us. Well, baby, wait till you hear this video. OK, that's all I can tell you, because you should be cautious about all of this uh, uh, false doctrine that um, you are hearing, which are um, from the false prophets. They are branding themselves. They are um, making it about uh, their name. They're making it about their image. They making it about uh your identity is based on them. I got to be your mentor. I have to, um, this is all of that crazy stuff. If you know any of these things that I'm talking about, then you will know what we're all talking about. And so with that being said, there's this video where this lady is telling you 
um, the effects of having the negative profit prophesy into your life. Now, uh, I was sharing with the fueling station that a seed, whether it's uh, good or bad, you know, it is going to grow. And so many people don't understand. And I began to share with them how they're sowing into ministries. They're supporting ministries that God is literally has literally put Ichabod on them or on their buildings. And so they're supporting something that God disallow and disapprove. We better be careful. OK, so with that being said, I need you to uh, listen to this video real quick. Uh, and I want you to pay attention to what she is saying, because I can't play it. Uh, I, I'm not going to put it on uh, the screen. I'm um, going to let you listen to it. OK, so let me see if I can let you listen to what she is saying. Um. I'm not endorsing anybody in particular. This word right here is just uh, right. And the reason why I say that, because a lot of times I'll see something that someone said today and tomorrow, they doing something whole that is totally different. Um, and so listen to this word from this young lady. The sorcerer was exposed. My God, let me let you hear it again because she didn't say what I wanted her to say, uh, the part that I wanted you to hear. Listen to this, guys. Prayer point right here. It came from a place of holy anger. It's not just those that say prophesy, Papa, that are fake prophets. There are people that actually preach the real gospel, but their source is from a demonic source. Because you pray to break down altars. You pray to break legal ground. You go through deliverance. Then you go online to a demonic ministry. And everything you pray about comes back a hundredfold. Some of you, what is fighting you is not even altars anymore. It's the fake prophets. It's the fake churches. It's the fake people of God that are snatching your glory away in deliverance camp. We were praying for a young girl. While we were praying for her, we were simply praying a prayer point. Lord, take this daughter of Zion out of captivity. We weren't even attacking false prophets or teachers. And the woman of God began to manifest the voice of the preacher that she was listening to for one year. Began to manifest and speak to her and identified his name and said, I will not let her go. He identified the name of the preacher and said, it is him. Just because she was watching online for a year. It wasn't a foundational problem. It wasn't an author. It was to the right place. May the Lord open your eyes at this hour. Even the very elect will be deceived. It will be a few times for you to be going through deliverance. After deliverance, then you go plug into the wrong network and your whole entire blessing, your glory, your miracle, everything is exchanged on that demonic altar. Listen, Paul identified the spirit in Acts chapter 16. When the familiar spirit was even celebrating him, he said, I was vexed in my spirit and he called Spirit out the same thing happened when Simon the sorcerer was exposed. You're gonna pray for that anointing of exposure, that the anointing of exposure will expose and expose the false preachers, the fake preachers that are connecting to the altars. And you say, You people, you want to lift your voice and you want to cry out for judgment. Let judgment be against those who are using the false. It's using your destiny. My God. OK, so guys, really quick, this is crazy. And I want the fueling station to understand that um, a lot of times we may not like everything about God's uh, servants and stuff. And I'm not trying to make this about me. But if that person is hearing from God, you better you better mind 
because you are not rebuking them. You're rebuking God. The reason why I say that is because I did a video, I did that series on the lion prophets. I've been talking about all of these fake prophets and preachers for probably the last 10 years. I've been showing pictures of these people that I am telling you they are in uh, a, a, posi a, a, a Ponzi scheme. I've been showing you fake anointings. There are people that are, they are excited that these false prophets prophesied to them. And I say that because they could be the next star that is coming up and they have these people that are in this ring leading uh, thing going on, this whole culture that is going on in the church that is like they are money making scheme and they are all in, in it, y'all. And they have the nerve to have some good, genuine people come up. And baby, if they prophesy over you, when they lay their hands on you, you just as good as gone. And I see them crying and falling on the floor. People that used to be leaders in the house of God, people that we grew up with when we were kids, they are now a part of this Ponzi scheme and they prophesying and releasing that spirit in the next generation of leaders that would have really been used by God. And them leaders or them young leaders are, oh my God, who they prayed over me. They prophesied over me. I'd be like, if you know what I know, you better run. You were you if that person came to prophesy over me, I would have left and went to the back of the building. Like, why are you even at their conferences in the first place? Because you that tells me right there you are looking to be in the circle of people that ain't even the ones that God have his anointing on anymore. Because half of these people, these young people that is really called by God in this generation are going to these conferences to these certain leaders that are corrupt. And baby, when they lay hands on them, they are, they're hooked. They hook, line, and sinker. Before you know it, they starting to do the same thing that they've been doing. I pray that you will understand that all of this stuff that they're doing. Okay, I wanted to say this. So the Lord had me to talk about uh, all of these lying prophets, but for the last couple of years, people will be thinking that I am doing something wrong when I'm showing you who the people are. Well, first of all, I see some of y'all following these people. They are putting something in you. And if you can't discern, God is giving us, giving uh, to the body of Christ prophets that will be bold enough to tell you who these people are. We have been rebuked for telling you the error of what they're doing instead of you rebuking them for what they're doing. You're rebuking us for taking you out of their hooks. Now, the Lord had me to talk about that just last week. And then the Lord told me I, I, I have it on hold because I have so many um, um, YouTube videos since I don't do long informational videos anymore. I have to pace myself. So the Lord, I, I've already pronounced this to y'all. I am going to do um, a teaching on evil altars. And sometimes it's not a matter of evil altars like the woman of God just says. It's a matter of connecting to people that is not of God, that is preaching the word of God, but it is from an evil and a, a, a demonic place. They are doing I showed a video where these people are going to other countries to gain power. See, they know that you're going to know the word is wrong. So they're going to use another spirit, y'all. And people saying, you better mind. That is a woman of God. Don't put your mouth on her. Uh, y'all better look at them spirits. Everything is not a spirit of God. And the Lord said for us to, to, to be able to discern the spirit of God. The problem with us not being able to discern is because we are not in the spirit. 
in order for us to discern, we have to be in the spirit, the real spirit, not the one that make you get goosebumps and you really don't know him. Not the one that could tell you you could do anything. And he, you know, some people think their imagination is the spirit. Then on top of that, the Holy Spirit, this same person that, that posted this video, they are um, real deep in the things of God and they have a lot of followers and stuff, but I'm not into the numbers. I mean, that if that's, you know, if, if that's genuine followers, then so be it. But if that's fake followers, then you you just like everybody else that's struggling with, you know, uh, followers. It's a business. So at the end of the day, this young man uh, posted another post that I put on my Facebook page. And he says, and the reason why I'm not trying to tell y'all who it is, is because if you don't want to listen to me, the God in me, why would you go over there and listen to him? I'm going to learn everything he had to learn. God sent you someone right here and he's telling you the same thing that he says. But some people, they'll get over there and just be like, oh, I'm going to start listening to him. The devil is a liar. Listen, that young man says we are raising up intercessors in our ministry. And he goes on you know, to talk about what God is going to do in this hour. This is the year of the intercessors, but he began to talk about the intercessor. And you, if y'all only know how many people fought, dropped out and, and couldn't commit to prayer, Lord have mercy. I put on his post, people, this is confirmation. And God is saying, if I'm giving instructions to my servants and these people, they don't want to do it. Just step out the way. Just, leave, just move out the way. Because they about to be destroyed just like Korah and all them people. Because they are rebellious. They go from place to place to place and they don't want to listen to nobody under no leadership. You got to understand, I hear this all the time. Oh, we left that. Girl, let me tell you, go sit your tail down and, and, and I'm going to help you leave me alone. I'm going to help you to leave me alone. Why? Because I'm not going to uh, uh, cater to all that. And I'm, I, I'm at this point, I'm not even trying to talk to people like that anymore because they, those kinds of people are determined. If God, if, 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 the, if something I'm saying eventually one day sink in or they figure this out one day, 10 years from now, then so be it. But I'm not wasting no time trying to convince people to not be stubborn and not fight God's people who is trying to help save their lives and souls. Plan. Oh, you know what? I uh, ba Listen, I tell you what, you, you they, don't, don't let your mind lead you. Because that's what you're doing right now. And that mind is very carnal. And that mind is telling you to do stuff that God ain't telling you to do. But what he is actually telling you to do, that's the thing that you don't want to do. These people are in the body of Christ just to mess you up. I want you to listen to what she said one more time. I want you to write down what she said they do. I want you to pray about what she just said they do. And the young man that says that we are getting ready to raise intercessors up in this ministry, he had people lining up for intercessory. You got people dropping out at uh, flies. Somebody was saying on a broadcast um, a couple of uh, weeks ago that God is calling. This was a this was like the third person I heard them saying this. God is calling because of the what is getting ready to come into earth with this uh, new, um, I, I, it, it, they didn't say it was a, yeah, it was a new um, pandemic or something coming. And they say God is raising up the intercessor before this. And, and basically um, they were saying, you know why people don't want to intercede? Because it costs them something. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, if you can't commit to God and the things of God, you're going to have a hard time talking to me because the way I see it, like a woman feels about her children. That's how I feel about God. We are in an hour where we better have paid attention. People are not understanding that they are letting all of this false and lies from the prophets that are not from God 
be their portion. And they, I receive that in the name of Jesus. How you receive that whole lie? These people are preaching out of vanity. Look at them. They full of vanity. It's all about them. It's all about a money-making scheme. Y'all, I'm not talking about the original um, uh, sow and support the ministry. This is a whole nother ball game what these people is doing. God is not pleased with this stuff. For me to get up on here, everything was shut down for me to lay down and get me some rest. I say, let me go up in there. Let me turn my stuff on. Let me give this message. Let me see how many five people going to listen to this. I'm not into um, bending over backwards no more. I've been hearing too much about let, let the, the seed fall where it's going to fall. You can't force feed nobody. I'm watching for people's souls. God knows I am, but I can't be getting myself all worked up behind people that want to kick against the prick. And then they got the nerve to make attention and draw attention to themselves and make it look like I have a problem. No, you have a problem with everything. And all of these kind of people, someone just did a, a, a message on, and it's a prophetic word I sold into it. And she began to say, um, all of this disruption in the midst of you. Uh, and I'm going to play the video. And she said, so much disruption. It is to discourage you. It's to discourage other people. It's to discourage uh, your success and what God is about to do. She said, be very careful in this season. I say, yes, you ain't never lied. People sit right there for all of them years. And then when you call them to accountability, they, they, then they start manifesting. Why is that the case? Because anybody that you date or something that you don't, you're not familiar with, you don't even know them for real. You know them like on a past spot. But when you start getting close to people and finding out their real character, then they start showing you who they really are. This is all I have. I hope and pray to God there was something in this video that was said that will help you to stay awake and be vigilant. Vigilant means don't go to sleep. Don't allow any wooden nickels. Baby, y'all taking some wooden nickels from these people. There are preachers that are in sororities, y'all. You know how many people wanted to connect with me? There was this man that wanted to be my spiritual father. And he and his wife was in, she was in the, the, the female sorority and he was in the fraternity. And they and they got all of these people that are all over the internet. Baby, them people are some, some whole celebrities. They in sororities, they in Greek fraternities, they are in masonry. I mean, you got to look at, if you want to date somebody today, man, that's going to be hard. Because some of these people that say they're Christians start scrolling on their profile and see if you want to date them. <laughs> They'll say, God, five minutes, and then you'll start seeing what they really believe in just on their Facebook profile. We have to be careful that we are uh, 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 connecting with other like individuals because God says two can't walk together unless they agree. God is not calling us to be you, uh, be a uh, one. See the whole world talking about unity now, but Jesus said for the church to be one and the church should be preaching one message. The church is not preaching one message today. And so you got to be very careful what a wheat is at and what the tares are. What a wheat, where the tares. Where's the wheat and where the tares? Because wheat and tares look exactly alike. And that is the reason why we can't look at how it look. Let's discern. Lord, who is this person? What? Why is this person all of a sudden showed up? What is their intentions and what is their motives? And be more careful. My favorite scripture is... Be circumspectly and don't walk as fools. Circumspectly is meaning be strategic, be careful, be mindful, be deliberate. Because the adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion 
and he looking for somebody he could devour. And he don't look for people like we look for something. I look for it and it's gone. I didn't see nobody. Baby, he will look all through your bloodline. He'll come back and look again. He'll look when you discourage. The moment that you discourage, he'll try to devour you. You got a heartbreak. You got something um, happen. That's when the devil will bring in infection. Try to be infection. Infect your, your heart. Let's be mindful. Go back and listen to that, what I told you, because we are not being careful enough. I think we like people to the degree that we just like people. I told y'all years ago, be careful what table that you sit down and eat at. I wouldn't want to be half like half of these people that is in ministry that we're supposed to be looking up to. I don't look up to them people. They be like, well, if your ministry was successful, you would be doing what we do. And no, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's successful because I'm not doing what you're doing. Before God, not in your eyes. Who can't buy fake followers? Who can't do that? Who can't, who can't compromise and be a part of the fallen away church? It takes a whole lot of effort to stand for what is right. Well, it really don't. It really don't. Because to me, it takes more effort to compromise. Because once you make up your mind to go all the way for Jesus, there's no more. The struggle is over in that regard. That part of the struggle is over. I think people struggle more when they not just, they haven't decided to uh, which side they want to be on. Or they still you know, going back and forth. That's, I, I believe that's the struggle. And I might have, I might have been there at some point in my life, you know, when I started tiptoeing the tulips, there was a time I, I decided to go back in the world, but I didn't like it. I'm going to be honest with you because I didn't have peace of mind. I'm a no nonsense person. I ain't got time for all of that foolishness. I always deal with the elephant in the room. That ain't for you. That's for me. <laughs> I like peace of mind. Prophets are very people that have clear conscience and they, they cannot operate effectively if something is on their heart and something is on their mind. So they just, just assume, get it out the way. They're not going to rest until they get that out the way. That is the way they are built. So I really, really don't didn't feel comfortable when I was compromising in my life at that time, because I really was thinking about, I don't have peace. What if the Lord comes back right now? You know how many ministries that I have visited and walked clean up out of there? And it would break my heart when this first started happening to me when I moved down here when I was 20 some years old. And it broke my heart and God was preparing me for this day and age now. He says something going to happen. You're going to realize that this is something to do with the church. I say, God, they playing with you. Coming from a holiness church, I knew what it was like to live for God. And I started visiting in a new area and I started finding out all of them church. I'm just sitting back and I'm starting to see they got um, they they do anything to get a musician. Pastor and a secretary. Are messing with each other. As soon as people get out of church, they cursing and smoking and drinking. They listening to the same worldly music that the world is listening to, backing it up and dropping it like it's hot. I'm going, wait, what? I said, oh, uh -uh. Many people that didn't go in that direction or, and settle for those type of churches, it's not that they don't love God, it's that they love God, that they can't stay stuck to places like that. Y'all better catch our heads and be selective about where you go and what you allow in your spirit. Have a blessed day, guys. We're going to talk later.